This is an F-16 fighter jet. Since the 1970s, it's been a cornerstone of the U.S. Air Force. Now the U.S. allows all these militaries to also have F-16s. And since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has been begging for them. Zelensky has been doubling down on his request for NATO jets. And they really are pleas for fighter jets. But for Ukraine, the U.S. hasn't been as generous. You don't think he needs F-16s now? No, he doesn't need F-16s now. And that might be surprising because the U.S. has already given nearly $47 billion in military aid to Ukraine over the past year. That's a lot of weapons. Far more than it gave even some of its closest allies in 2020. And more than four times what it gave Afghanistan's army at the height of the U.S.-led war there. This is a historic number that you would see typically the U.S. military give to another country over decades. The U.S. refusing to send F-16s is a choice worth understanding because the weapons that the U.S. has and hasn't chosen to send Ukraine, and when they've sent them, have helped shape each phase of this war. So what has the U.S. been giving to Ukraine, and why? Back in 2014, Russia took over Crimea and parts of eastern Ukraine with the help of Ukrainian separatist fighters. In 2014, ragtag wouldn't even describe the state of the Ukrainian armed forces. This is Jack Detch, foreign policy's U.S. national security reporter. They'd been gutted by years of neglect. A lot of the troops didn't have uniforms. Some of them didn't have hot food. Ukraine's leaders asked the U.S. for help, but President Barack Obama only sent protective gear and supplies, not weapons. In 2018, President Donald Trump agreed to send a limited number of anti-tank missiles, called javelins. But the Ukrainian army was still woefully unprepared if Russia decided to escalate the conflict, which it did. In 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Russian jets and missiles were doing immense damage from the air, and Russian tanks were pushing Ukraine's troops backwards. Ukraine, again, asked the U.S. for help. From the beginning of the war, the Ukrainians wanted a lot of the things that you see on the menu right now. Uh, they wanted F-16s, they wanted main battle tanks. So they wanted this stuff from the get-go. President Joe Biden agreed to send a large package of weapons, but it mainly included the smaller and relatively unsophisticated kinds. The U.S. sent more javelins, plus ammunition, guns, and even some anti-aircraft missiles called Stingers. And many U.S. allies sent similar types of weapons. Germany sent 1,000 anti-tank missiles and 500 Stingers. Belgium sent 2,000 machine guns, but no one sent their advanced battle tanks or fighter jets. The main question in the beginning of the war was not just what the U.S. was going to send. I mean, the question was, like, are these guys going to fight? Certainly, that's been a resounding yes. Ukraine soldiers used anti-aircraft missiles to prevent Russian aircraft from controlling the skies. And they used the guns, ammo, and anti-tank weapons to halt Russia's progress. Like in this video, which shows Ukrainian soldiers destroying dozens of Russian tanks approaching Kyiv. But even though the Ukrainians were using these weapons well, the U.S. hesitated to send it more advanced equipment. So the U.S. has been concerned at almost every step about the potential for Russia escalating the conflict. The U.S. worried that Ukraine might use some of these advanced weapons, like fighter jets or long-range missiles, to strike inside Russia, sparking an escalation. This concern would come to define how the U.S. supplied Ukraine. In the spring of 2022, the war entered its second phase. Russia and Ukraine's armies weren't moving as much anymore, and instead began pounding each other with artillery. Russia was firing a staggering 60,000 rounds a day, while Ukraine could only manage to fire around 6,000. And it was quickly running low. But the U.S. was still hesitating to expand the scope of its support. They're looking at what's kind of on the Christmas wish list, and deciding what's actually prudent to give. Finally, in April 2022, the U.S. agreed to send Ukraine its own artillery. And like in the first phase of the war, a number of allies then sent their own artillery, even though some had wanted to do it earlier. You sort of saw folks in Europe wanting the U.S. to lead, but sometimes the U.S. still very much deep in deliberation mode. The most important weapon the U.S. sent were called HIMARS, powerful rocket launchers that could hit targets as far as 80 kilometers. They weren't powerful enough to strike inside Russia, but they did enable Ukraine to hit Russian supply depots and command posts far behind its front lines, which forced the Russians to move them back, weakening its troops at the front. That's how Ukraine captured the Kharkiv region in September and the major city of Kherson in November. 
And by then, a new phase was beginning. In winter 2023, both sides were planning new attacks. Russia was gearing up to push further into the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. But Ukraine also wanted to take back territory, particularly in the south. In order to do this, Ukraine would need to move troops quickly, which requires armored vehicles, like tanks, something it had been asking for for months. Some countries had sent older models of tanks, but just like with artillery, the US waited. They wanted the Germans to act first by sending Leopard battle tanks. The Germans were waiting for the United States to give them some political top cover here, a little bit of a game of chicken. Finally, in January 2023, the UK and then the US agreed to send their advanced tanks, prompting Germany and several allies to follow with their best battle tanks. Just like with anti-tank missiles and HIMARS before, the US and its allies are hoping that these tanks can push Ukraine to win some decisive victories in this phase, which is where we are now. If the Ukrainians kind of can't turn the tide, turn the balance right now, it's it's going to be tricky to see, you know, how this doesn't go into its an extended stalemate. That's why Ukraine is still asking for fighter jets. F-16s could protect Ukraine's tanks from Russian aircraft, making their attack much more powerful. Ukraine has also been asking the U.S. for long-range missiles, called attackums, which it could use to strike Russian positions as far as 300 kilometers behind their lines. Already a few allies are in favor of sending these weapons, but as of this video, the U.S. is hesitating over familiar concerns. Questions about their, their readiness for, for trading on those. Also, of course, you know, just, just the question again, how far are the Ukrainians going to fire these things? So far, none of the decisions to send any of these weapons has inspired Russia to escalate. And in March, Poland and Slovakia agreed to send some of their older fighter jets, making the eventual approval of F-16s or long-range missiles more of a possibility. But after giving Ukraine over $46 billion in military aid, public opinion in the U.S. is changing. A recent Pew Research poll showed the portion of people who believe the U.S. has sent too much aid to Ukraine has grown, particularly on the right. Biden facing a lot of pressure, not only within his party, but of course uh, from Republican rivals getting ready for the 2024 debate stage. That's going to make it much more difficult for President Biden to sustain this clip. And even if Biden maintains popular support to send weapons, he might not have enough. A recent analysis found that certain supplies may be approaching the minimal level that the U.S. requires for its own war planning. It's why the U.S. is now focusing on ways to increase production of weapons at home, in allied countries and in Ukraine. But just building those plants could take years. One year of U.S. and allied support has helped transform the Ukrainian army into a formidable force, whose soldiers have repeatedly held its ground against a much larger Russian army. But with both the battlefield and U.S. politics changing, the questions now are how well is Ukraine going to fight with what they have, and how much more U.S. help can they count on? Thanks for watching this episode of Vox Atlas. Vox has been covering the war in Ukraine since it began, with in-depth explainers and analysis. You can find all our coverage of the war at vox.com Ukraine.